I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're going to find out just how accurate the internal resistance measurement function is on some popular LiPo chargers. Well, the ones I have here anyway. And we're going to compare their accuracy to this. Ooh, someone loaned me, a local guy has one of these. This is a high-priced, fancy, schmancy internal resistance measurement box. And that's what it's designed to do. And so presumably it's super accurate. So let's compare it to these chargers. The chargers that we've got in this roundup are the ISDT. That's the 500 watt ISTT charger. Uh, I've got a review of that if you're interested. I'll link to it in the upper right. Uh, the AccuCell 6. This charger's been around forever. And it's the first charger that many people get when they're new to the hobby. Runs about, I think, 30 bucks. I haven't checked recently. Uh, and will charge most of the batteries that you're going to be dealing with. The Reactor Quad Core. Now, this is four 300 watt reactor chargers all integrated into a single unit so presumably this is representative of the whole reactor line and then of course this big fancy schmancy esr meter we're going to compare their results what is internal resistance internal resistance is a quality of a battery it's a sort of a physical quality that resists current flow and it's as if the battery had a resistor in series with the discharge lead uh, and what this means in practice is that when you draw current from the battery some of that current is converted to heat instead of being converted to work in whatever the thing is that's the motors of your copter for example the other effect that internal resistance has is that when you draw current the voltage drops now there's more to voltage drop in a lipo battery than just internal resistance and that's a topic for another day but effectively whenever you draw current through a resistance you get voltage drop and you get uh, power converted to heat and that's the effect that we see in our batteries a battery that has higher internal resistance will have more sag and get hotter than a battery that has lower internal resistance all else being equal so basically lower internal resistance is good another thing to say about internal resistance is that it is not a fixed or constant value a battery is a chemical process and and so it changes for example if the battery gets hotter the internal resistance goes down because chemical processes happen more easily at higher temperatures. The other thing that the internal resistance depends on is the battery state of charge. A battery will have lower internal resistance at a higher charge level. So in order to make sure that these batteries were all tested under fair conditions, they were all tested at exactly the same temperature and exactly the same state of charge. And that brings us back to the ISDT charger. Because the ISDT charger only shows internal resistance while charging, and because I tested all of these batteries at full charge in order to give them the lowest internal resistance possible, what I had to do with the ISDT is run a charge cycle, and then at the end of the charge cycle, look at what the internal resistance was. And that's why I've only tested three of them on the ISDT, because I didn't, want, I didn't have time to go run a full charge cycle on all of these packs and then go look at the internal resistance. So you can see here, this is not a very complicated spreadsheet. We've got the internal resistance that each of the devices measured. Uh, and then what I've done here is I've calculated the difference in percent, as a percent uh, between the ESR meter and each of these. So we can see here the ISDT for this battery measured 65% of the ESR meter. The AccuCell 6 measured 83%. The reactor measured 147%. And the reason I, I made these columns up is... I thought to myself, well, you know, there's different ways of measuring internal resistance. You know, the way you measure internal resistance is you draw current from the battery and you calculate how much uh, current you should be getting based on the load you're applying. And any difference is attributed to the battery's internal resistance. That's the short version of it. So maybe one of these chargers is using a, a one amp discharge or one is using a three amp discharge to measure the internal resistance. And perhaps they would produce slightly different numbers if that was the case. So... What we should see here, if these are accurate, but using a slightly different methodology, is that one of them might read some percent high or some percent low, but we should see a trend. And what I think is really interesting is that we, we don't really see a trend. We see that the AccuCell 6, for example, sometimes it reads in the range of about 83%. Sometimes it reads 111% or 110%. And by the way, yes, I did repeat the, I like, I was so confused. Because if you look at the AccuCell 6, 
it's off, it's around 80%, maybe 90% most of the time, but then sometimes we get these uh, way off numbers that are way higher, and I repeated them, and they did come out basically the same. Uh, so, very confusing. The, the reactor, on the other hand, reads most of the time in around the 135 to 145% range compared to the ESR meter. Uh, but then sometimes we've got one where it's 223%. It's reading way higher. And again, I did repeat these numbers, and I have no idea why sometimes they came off so dramatically different. I do want to reassure you, because you're going to go to the comments and you're going to talk to me about this, that I, I've, I was as careful as I could be to test these batteries under very tightly controlled conditions. For example, I, I tested them all one after the another immediately, so there was no change in the battery's state of charge or in their temperature or anything else that I can think of that would affect the accuracy of the results. And the, the results are, well, first of all, if you're hoping for accurate results, if you're hoping to say this battery is 23 milliohms of internal resistance, just give up. Just give up. Because the AccuCell 6 reads, you know, 20% low. The reactor reads 40% high. The ISDT, who the heck knows, it's all over the place. Like, which of these is right? I don't, I don't know. None of, I, I don't know. But the other thing is that they're not even consistent even within themselves. They're really kind of all over the place even within themselves. And sometimes really dramatically so. So... I'm not even sure you can fully trust the numbers that they're giving you, uh, if, you, if, you if you're doing an apples-to-apples -apples comparison of one charger to itself. So what even can we take from this, right? Well, if you're looking for accurate measurements of internal resistance, you're not going to get it from any of the chargers that I tested. They're, they're not even really internally consistent with each other. Uh, if I repeated the test, I would get close to the same number, but there might be a 5 or 10% variance. And that's a pretty significant amount, uh, all things considered. How accurate is this thing? I don't know. I mean, it's producing numbers, and but are, I, there's no way of telling if they're more accurate than the AccuCell 6 or the reactor. They're just, they're different. They're not consistent. So, I mean, hopefully this thing being a dedicated piece of machinery that's specifically designed to measure internal resistance and do other things like it, hopefully it's been calibrated in some meaningful way that means it's accurate and we can trust the numbers. But... I have no way of knowing that. So uh, what I can tell you though is that if you're trying to figure out what your battery's internal resistance is, the test function on your charger, if you've got one of these chargers, is probably not a very meaningful way of doing it. Uh, even comparing one charger's measurement to itself, uh, there's such a, such a variance in individual measurements that I'm not sure it's meaningful. But if what you want is a very, very gr gross, rough measurement of whether one battery has a higher internal resistance than another, it's, it's worth something. I mean, if, even if there's 10% or 15% variance, if the batteries are, have a difference of 30%, well, maybe that tells you something. Anyway, there you go. Uh, internal resistance measurement function, not that great. That, maybe, that means, maybe that means this is worth the money if we assume that it's accurate. How would we know if it's accurate, though? I don't, I don't know. Probably involve an oscilloscope. All right. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.